G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from the Byron Bay Observatory. Is PixInsight worth it in 2024? Software is expensive. Everything is expensive right now. I want a new telescope, but uh, it's expensive. But should you buy PixInsight? The answer is yes, like a resounding yes. I'm not gonna beat around the bush there. If you look at any of your favorite astrophotographers, look at any of the APODs that are winning awards, look at any of the stuff that you enjoy and see what it was processed in, there is a 99.9% .9 chance that it was processed in PixInsight. It is fantastic software and I can't recommend it highly enough. But I also know what it's like as a young astronomer. There are a lot of young astronomers watching this channel. If you are a young astronomer, remember, you are an astronomer. You don't need a degree for that, you just need to buy a telescope. So I remember what it was like as a young astronomer and thinking, do I really need to shell out this much money for a piece of software. So I get it. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some of the work I've been doing recently and tell you the things that I love and hate about PixInsight. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. Here's an image I've just finished of the Pillars of Creation, M16, the Eagle Nebula. I really love taking this target. It's so bright. It is quite small, but the greater area of emission is quite nice. Obviously, this area has been done to death by everyone, every man and his dog, NASA, Hubble, James Webb Space Telescope. But I think that sort of adds to its appeal because people like to see their photo versus uh, the professionals. But even still, I do get a little bit sick of seeing it so green all the time just because of that famous Hubble photo. So uh, I've done this one in a very, well, not very natural, it's still narrowband, but what I've done is in order to get the layering effect with that blue is just to pull the oxygen out a bit harder. So this is hydrogen, oxygen, oxygen. And then I've shot the RGB layer separately, remove those stars and put them back in as naturally colored stars. I did all of this in PixInsight. I always go over to Photoshop just to tweak new parameters, but I find that more and more I'm staying in PixInsight for longer as I get better with the software. It's been years, I've been using PixInsight for years and I, I'm, I really still think like I'm not even barely getting the hang of it, but I'm getting there. Number one on the list of things I love about PixInsight is that there's no subscription. It's really hard to find software these days that doesn't have a subscription when it's commercial. Now, they might change that fact before I even post this video. I cannot see any way that this won't go to a subscription model eventually. It's just such good software. And the licensing system is all sort of set up for that. But right now I've bought it and I've bought it once and I've had access to the download sections, the updates as they come through and the data sets that they provide. Number two on the list of things I love about PixInsight is just the algorithms. Like I found when I went from jumping over from cheaper or free software uh, to, to PixInsight, I had access to not just one stacking algorithm, but several stacking algorithms. And those algorithms have parameters that I can tweak. So as a tool, it gives you much, much, much greater control, fine control over things that are hidden under the bonnet in other software. So I really enjoy that. The algorithms and the algorithms that you can produce with things like pixel math are just fantastic. The third thing I like about PixInsight is that it's very much a one-stop shop. There are lots of different products for doing different. There's software to denoise, there's software for gradients, there's software for star removal, there's software for AI, whatever. But PixInsight kind of collects everything into one area where you can do your whole image calibration, image registration, image processing, and then post-processing. Um, it really keeps you within that framework. And like I said, the more and more I use it, the more I find myself staying within that program. Number four is just the huge amount of learning resources. Because it is such popular software, you can find so many YouTube videos, you can find courses, the Masters of PixInsight course, the, I've got the uh, Inside PixInsight book up there, but there are a number of other resources as well. Whatever you want to know about how PixInsight works or how someone's workflow goes, 
there's just so many resources. In fact, that's why I've avoided becoming a Pix Insight channel here myself because some of those workflows can be very long videos. They're not sort of what I'm going for, but I know that you guys want to see that now and then. So I will share some processing tidbits in my workflow as I go, but I'm certainly no expert and there are experts out there and they're really good. Which brings me to point number five. It's incredibly deep. I feel like I've been using it for years and years and I'm just scratching the surface. And every time I think I know enough about PixInsight, I learn some other new trick or some other new process that I can try. Sometimes I'll just sit in the menus and go through some of the options and say, what's this? You know, what's this little tool or what's this little script? It's full of different things that I have no idea. It'll take years for me to learn even half of this program. And I think that's a really good thing because it means that the money that I shelled out for this program is going to pay dividends for years and years. There's always something new to learn. And I love that. Hey, and if you like any of the photos that I take from the Byron Bay Observatory, maybe you want to build a Byron Bay Observatory all of your own. Uh, you can build this. Everything that I use in this observatory is in the description links down below. And you can get all of this from High Point Scientific. High Point Scientific are a New Jersey based astronomy vendor. They stock all of this and any other brand. They support their products, they have a price match guarantee, and they've been supporting this channel for a long time. So thank you High Point Scientific. Use the links down below and take your astrophotography to the next level if you want. Number six on the list of things I love about PixInsight is the ability for it to be extendable through scripts and modules. And of course, we all like to bundle in the extras like BlurX or DeepSNR I've been using lately. Oh, the ease processing suite. That was originally coded by a guy I knew on Discord, but the reins have been passed to a new developer now and thankfully they're keeping that going. The ease processing live stack through PI is far better than the live stack in Nina. I really enjoy it. So I love this idea that PixInsight is more of an open community, an open software where you can contribute your own repository and you can install your own module. Absolutely fantastic. Now, let's go through some of these things that are a little bit painful with PixInsight. The user interface drives me bananas. I, and I know it's not just me. Like, I get what they're going for, and I get that these tools are instances that you can drag, but this whole thing about dragging this little triangle to apply it, and then sometimes that works, and sometimes you have to apply it globally instead, it's really confusing for someone who's not a programmer. I feel like this could have been implemented a little better. And a lot of the times when I'm using a tool and I have the parameters set up the way I want, I should be able to save those parameters. Now they have this process icon thing where you can sort of save your parameters in a process icon and then open that up later. But I think I prefer the Adobe approach to this where you can save the settings as a little drop down and then just pull those settings back up as you like. Obviously people have memed the whole naming convention thing, but some of the choices are bizarre. Like just as an example, you've got image calibration, you've got image integration, but for some reason they call it star alignment instead of image registration. And the way things are divided up in the menus, uh, especially with extra third party things where they don't know where things belong. Yeah, so there's like a render area in the process list with only one tool in it because they didn't know what else to fit in render. But then there's a noise generation section, but technically isn't noise generation rendering? You're rendering something? So shouldn't that be in the rendering section? And there are more examples like total generalized variation with TV, TGV denoise is not in the noise reduction area. Yeah, it could just be cleaned up. If you have your own little gripes with PixInsight and naming conventions or the user interface, leave them in the comments down below so I know that it's not just me that's going crazy here. Another thing I strongly dislike about PixInsight, and I know that they're fixing this, is that there's no GPU acceleration yet. Someone told me the other day there's actually a tick box in the settings where you can enable GPU acceleration. If you've used PixInsight for a while, you know that it's a very slow program. It seems to be very I.O. heavy because it's dealing with files, but it's not the I.O. that's doing all the heavy lifting when you're doing the stacking and stuff. The CPU is going crazy. And this is all stuff that can be accelerated with the GPU if you've got an 
NVIDIA graphics card or something like that that can actually accelerate these processes. Some of that stuff's already been bundled in with uh, StarNet and, uh, and Blur Exterminator. So there are some third-party processes that you can GPU accelerate already. And that's been a game changer for me because it means I can try this, these processes very quickly and see if they work and undo them and adjust the parameters. Whereas without GPU acceleration, they take several minutes at a time. So I feel like the whole program could be so well optimized if they could enable that graphics card acceleration. It would just make the whole program fly, which would be incredible. I know it's coming, so I'm looking forward to it. The other thing that drives me bananas about PixInsight is when you upgrade the software and you go through that process of updating the software and you've got to close the program, open it back up again, and then all of a sudden half the modules and scripts that you've installed before are gone. And you've got to go through the process of re-enabling them through the repository or the module manager. And uh, one time the image solver script disappeared and image solver feels to me like it's a script that I don't really care if it's a script or a module or a process. To me as a user, these are all just processes that I use within the program. There is no differentiation for me as to whether it's coded with the scripting language or compiled in the background. But image solver seems like something that really needs to be in the process menu because it's fundamental to a lot of the stuff that we do in PixInsight. But it is a script technically, so it's in the script menu. And that disappeared one day when I <laughs> installed, when I updated PixInsight. And I had to manually go through files to drag it back in. It seems a bit clunky. And I'm sure you guys have a few horror stories like that yourself. And then when you do, um, reinstall stuff, it wants you to reboot the program again, and so you've got to close everything, and it, no, it's annoying. And, and that takes me to my final gripe, <laughs> is that like last night I had all of these tools open, I was working on my image, I ran one process, I uh, forget what it was, I think it was just some rendering process, and the whole program crashed, and my whole workspace was lost, everything that I was working on was lost, and I feel like this could be better implemented with file recovery. If it's keeping a temporary buffer of all the files that you have open and all those little windows where I have my files and my processes configured, I hate losing those when the program randomly crashes. And then I've got to go back and figure out what those settings were by using the metadata or, or, if, or just remembering them. Um, it would be great if these tools were persistent so that when I close the program and then open it back up again, they're there. And again, if we could save the parameters of those tools into a drop-down template or something like that so we can easily just go back to our favorite settings for those tools. But all of that said, it's still the GOAT. Like, you need to have this software. If you're getting into this hobby, I know you want to save up for a big amount, a bigger telescope, a bigger camera, but at some point, do yourself the favor, buy this software. It's unbelievable. And yes, it will take you years to learn. And yes, it looks like a complete spaceship. And yes, the user interface is the most twisted approach to UX design I've ever seen, but the results speak for themselves. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you've been watching Star Stuff. And remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.